Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am doing a review and demo, I guess more of a demo, on Charlotte Tilbury's Instant Look in a Palette in Beauty Glow. I've really been liking this palette and I'm just gonna go ahead and say I didn't get to film this intro this morning when I actually did the demo and the outro. So my lighting is a little bit different right now. I filmed at about 8.30 this morning and it's around 5.30 in the evening right now. So things might look a little bit different, but this is just the general look. It's very simple and easy, but still glowy and pretty. I think it's good for any time of year. I have been wearing this pretty often. I brought it with me on a trip recently. You've seen it listed in my description box in a few of my videos, and this is a requested video by several of you. So if you look at the palette, and mine's kind of dusty because I've been using it a lot, but this is what it looks like. She has three eye shades here. You have the Enhance, the Brighten, and the Smoke shade, and here you have a highlight, two blushes, a pop, a swish, and the bronzer. So I feel like this palette is really versatile. I have been using it in so many different ways. I feel like this is a really good palette to bring for travel. And I feel like a lot of different skin tones could probably wear this. I know for me personally, I wasn't quite sure about this cheek color here. You'll see how I've been using it in the demo and how I get it to work for me. And I know Charlotte has her certain way that she uses everything in kind of the step by number system with this all over the lid, this in the crease, this to smoke out the outer V. This of course is a bronzer and contour. This is your typical highlight. And then the swish all over the cheek and the pop on the apple of the cheek. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I do things a little bit differently as you'll see in this video. I just have gotten a lot of use out of this palette. Basically for me, the only thing not in this palette is a liner. Other than that, it's pretty much a one-stop shop unless you just want extra variety for some reason in your palette. But if you're traveling, I think it's great. It's sturdy, it's pretty. I do go on work trips. I go on vacation as a lot of people do. And I wanted something quick, easy, and simple to bring with me so I didn't have to do a whole lot of thinking. And I got this palette so I would have something convenient and compact to bring with me that would have basically everything I need in it. And this fits that bill for me. I've really been enjoying it. And if you wanna see one of the looks that I've been doing, just keep watching. I know Charlotte has her method of using this palette where she uses her own approach to make it very easy where you use the Brighten shade first all over the lid and then the Eye Enhance and then the Smoke shade for the eyes. I do something a little bit differently because, I don't know, I just do. And since you guys want to see how I've been using it, that's what I'm going to do rather than take you through the step-by-step -step approach. So what I do is take my Sigma E40 Taper Blending Brush and I take it into this bronzer shade, which I think is a great transition shade, and take it in the crease and slightly above and take it in circular motions. Um, almost up to the brow bone just as a transition color because if you have hooded eyes or downturned eyes or small eyes, which is pretty much what I always talk about, it just helps to have a transition shade. And I know you can use the Eye Enhance shade for that, which I'll use in a minute, but I really like having something that goes up here that's not a shimmer, even though her shimmers are not over the top. But I just have been using this. So then I take that same shade and I take just a flat uh, domed blending brush. This is an Omnia uh, Balm, B-O-M-18 by Royal and Langnickel. And I just dip it in and then I'm gonna run it along the lower lash line. And that just helps make your eye look a little bigger but without um, putting a harsh line down there. Next, I'm taking my MAC 239 brush. You can take any flat, dense brush that's just really packed with bristles. You can even take your finger. I've done that before. And I'm putting it in the enhanced shade to brighten up my lid. It's a really subtle sheen, which I like because 
even if you have hooded eyes, putting just a nice light sheen on the lid can help open up the eye. And again, it's really subtly shimmery, glimmery. Um, I like that about these shadows because they're not over the top and I can wear it to work. I can wear it really anywhere. And this is really quick and easy. And I'm just kind of tapping this on the lid. So now that that's done, I'm taking my Sigma E25 brush and I'm gonna put that in the Eye Enhance shade and just run that along the crease. You don't have to do this since we do have a transition shade, but it does just bring a little bit of that subtle shimmer up into the crease and blend the transition shade with the lid shade. Just kind of makes it a little softer. I've just been doing this lately and since you guys have asked what I've been doing this is what I've been doing so now I'm taking that same brush and I'm taking the eye smoke shade right here and this is the step that I think has intrigued you guys the most because it just adds something on that outer corner so what I do is I'll start at this outer V or this outer third of my lid but if I just smoke that out like she does in a few of her tutorials, like Charlotte does, I feel like it kind of drags my eye down. Like if I just did my eye like that and I left that as my smoke, which is fine for some people if you have almond eyes and your eyes kind of go up like that, your corner. But see how this eye, I don't know, kind of looks more downturned when I do that versus this eye, which I still haven't done liner yet. So what I do with my smoke is I'll do that outer third of the lid, but then I take this straight across as well so that it's even with the top part of the curvature of my mobile lid. So I'll just kind of take that to where this goes in. It just keeps going with the bottom extension of my lower lash, basically. So I'll just kind of keep going with that smoke a little bit. I'm just visualizing this lower lash line extending and I'll just close my eye and I keep going with that smoke. And um, I really don't even need a blending brush with this unless I got too much pigment in the first place, but usually it just blends itself. And that's really all I do. And you guys have been asking me what I do. But if you feel like you need more blending, grab a blending brush. So like I did feel like I needed a little bit of blending there. So then for the eyes, I'll either take the enhanced shade or the um, highlighter and I'll put that on the brow bone. And you can put some highlighter in the inner corner if you want. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So I'm going to line off camera and I'm gonna direct you to that video. It's a very simple liner. I don't use this palette because there's really not a liner color in this palette, um, but I'm gonna do a very simple technique today that takes about 30 seconds just for an everyday natural looking liner. And then I'm gonna come back and do the rest of the face. Okay, so I've done my mascara and liner and now I'm going to do bronzer and I will use it a little bit as contour. It looks like it's a really subtle bronzer and it is, but you can still get a decent contour with it and a bronzed look, which I like. I think if you have super dark skin, um, it could be an issue. That is kind of a complaint I have with this palette or just, I don't know, an issue I think some people might have with this palette. I don't have my tiny brush in here, so I'm just going to use this with a light hand along my nose. So that's an option is to use a small narrow brush and I forgot to say what this was. This is the um, Sephora Pro Contour 79 brush or you can use a big fluffy brush like this Real Techniques. Blush brush 
No. Yeah, this is their blush brush. That's what I use for a bronzer brush. And because this is narrow, some people say that there's an issue getting big brushes in, but I just pinch them and get them in there and you can use it more as just kind of a bronzer and get towards the back of the cheek and all along in there. And you know, I do that with no problem too and use it along the forehead. So I'm just giving you some options. I've used it both ways and it's fine. And it's actually a nice, subtle, bronzy look. I like it because it's, it's natural. Her blush technique is the Swish and Pop. And the Swish color in this particular palette is a little bit deep. It's kind of a rosy bronze color. And then the Pop is this great peachy color with a tinge of pink. I love the pop color. It took me a little while to get my brain wrapped around the Swish color. What I use for the Swish color is a very loose brush, a duo fiber brush, a skunk brush, something like this um, that I got from my BoxyCharm. Tarte has a brush like this. This is the um, Luxie, what is this? 640 Pro Precision Tapered Brush. I think this is a MAC 188, 288. I feel like you really need something that's not gonna pick up a ton of this product to get the right effect from it. So you're just gonna swish it all along your cheekbone. Tap, 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 tap. And tap off the excess. And I just swish. But it is a deep blush. And the effect is a glow and a little goes a long way. And this is one that I would definitely do in circular motions because if you don't, I don't think it's gonna blend right, but if you do it in circular motions, I think it can look really pretty. So that looks kind of heavy right now, but once the pop goes on, I think it looks better. So then I just take the cheek pop color and dip a more dense brush into it. This is a Morphe E3, but you can use any brush. And you just pop that on. And I forgot to do the highlight before I did my blush. I always do it before and I just forgot. So I'm using this Morphe M510 and taking the highlight and I just do that all along here in a C shape. That's the only place I highlight. I don't do the tip of my nose. I don't do my chin or anything like that. I like her highlights because they're very subtle and I, like I said, I do usually do them before I do my blush, but it'll work now too. But that's kind of part of the whole bronzy look is having a little highlight there. I put on MAC Shy Girl for my lips. I am loving this lipstick lately. And I'm just gonna show you really quickly because a lot of you have been asking me about how I use finishing powder. And I'm gonna take MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Medium Plus and dust it over because if you do go overboard with your blush, which sometimes happens, you can use this and buff it out and take it down a notch. And you don't even have to have felt like you went overboard. It really just diffuses everything together. But um, you just take a finishing powder and lightly go over everything and it really just kind of blends everything together and gives it a more finished look and it keeps the look glowy and that's what I like about it. You know, I don't do this every day, but I do find that I do it a lot because it's just pretty. It never looks heavy. It never looks overdone. It just looks finished. So that is the finished look for today with the Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look in a Palette in Beauty Glow. And I've been using this look a lot, but I've been known to use this as a transition shade. I've been known to use this on the lid. I've used this as a smoke shade. Um, I've used this on the lid. It's really versatile, which is what I like about it. I think it was a good purchase for me. This is the first Charlotte Tilbury palette I've owned, and I'm definitely intrigued about the other ones. If you own any of them, I would love to hear feedback. I am light, medium skin tone. I'm a little leery about the natural one because I hear it's pretty light yet it looks so pretty. So if you have that one in particular, I'm interested in hearing your thoughts on it for non-fair people. 
and I hope you enjoyed this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button if you're not following me on social media. I'll put that on the screen and down below. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.